Hey, it's Tara with Reiki on the Run. And today we are going to talk about female uh, sexual issues and problems and letting go and healing and what you can do to help with those things. And um, first, well, first, if you're a man, you don't have to run away. <laughs> if you want a little bit of insight possibly on um, how some women are things that we have to deal with, uh, you might want to stick around and listen. Um, but I'll tell you how this came about. So I had someone request a Reiki video. I have a, I think my second most popular Reiki video is, um, or my second most popular video is a Reiki video and it's on sexual healing. Um, and I think it's probably popular half, half because people want to see what kind of weirdness <laughs> it is and uh, half of people who really uh, are there for the Reiki and the healing. So um, I got this comment. Uh, I'll read the comment to you. Would you consider doing Reiki for female sexuality to feel more lust and pleasure during sexual activities? To orgasm easily, to have full body orgasms, to be highly sensitive, let yourself fall, feel safe and secure, release blockages and shame, etc. It would be so great. And I think this is a great idea. Uh, and the more I thought about it, I just thought of there are so many components to that. There's there's so so much to that. Um, I usually talk a little before my Reiki videos, but I felt like there was so much to talk about that I wanted to make a separate video um, talking about all this stuff. Um, I, I'll speak in more general terms. Uh, I'm not going to use the a word constantly because I don't know if the YouTube gods will strike down on me. Um, so instead of that, I'll say finish, finishing. Um, also, I want to keep it as family friendly as possible in case somebody stumbles on this. Um, also, it's probably going to be a pretty long video, so <laughs> you might need to pause and come back to it later. Um, but the more I kept thinking about it, I wasn't sure. Do I want to put this on the internet? The internet's forever. Do I want to talk about this topic? Um, and I wasn't going to do it. But there are so many women who suffer in silence. And um, the very last time I was thinking about, I had already written out, I wasn't sure if I was going to make the video. Right as I was thinking about it, I got a comment on that sexual healing video with lots of exclamation points. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is so wonderful. And so I just took that as um, a go ahead to go ahead and do this video um, because a lot, a lot of women, like I said, we do suffer in silence and um, I'll put the video out, the Reiki video when I do that, I'll put that out, I'll put that link below when I've finished it. I haven't done that yet, um, but I have been the last couple of weeks, I've been really pure and I've been meditating a lot and eating and drinking clean. Um, so that this energy that comes through will be as clean as possible. Um, also, this is not a general rule for all women. Some women, they can just, uh, you know, take off like a rocket every time. <laughs> and that's wonderful. You can go ahead and shut this video off because none of us here like it. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, not everyone has these problems, but it is, it is a big problem. And that I've, you know, I've experienced, I've uh, seen through talking through friends, girlfriends, and through reading and research that I've, I've done. I'm a, a documentary and research nerd. I love constantly learning new information. And so I research everything. Um, and this is something that a lot of women suffer with. And I think some women don't even know that they suffer from. Um, so a lot of people don't talk about it. Some people talk about these things, so no problem. Some people don't because they're too embarrassed or they think that's not something to talk about. Um, and so let's get into it. And I will try to uh, be mature about this. <laughs> I think sometimes I have the mind of an 18 year old boy. And so I'll try to um, be an adult about it. So first we'll start what can make us unable to or block us from finishing? And the first one is shame, which is huge. Um, shame probably, I think, would make up the bulk of why 
we have trouble letting go and experiencing um, all there is to be experienced. Um, and I think it's mostly subconscious. Um, it's, it's been ingrained in us, uh, maybe as a child, usually when we're younger, and uh, it's not even something that we think about. It's just a, it's a, it's a, a natural reaction. It's just a natural way that we feel. We feel shame without maybe even putting a name on it, knowing and understanding that it's shame that we're feeling. And um, interesting, interestingly enough, shame is at the bottom of the rung, uh, like the lowest vibration you can have, you know, fear, um, guilt, shame, all of the worst possible vibration you could feel. And then on the other end is love. And that's where you should be, you know, when we're engaged in these activities, we should be you know, more up there towards the love and pleasure, um, nowhere near the shame. So this, this is a big one, shame. Um, and, and we can get that in lots of ways um, from our parents. And, you know, it's not always like your parents are trying to shame you on purpose. Your, your parents can unknowingly do these things just in the way they react. If you um, wear something, if you are little and happen to touch yourself or they, you know, whatever, your parents can shame you without them realizing that's what they're doing. Um, they can freak out if you do something in public or um, if you try to go out wearing something that you feel really good in and they freak out. Um, that can cause you to feel shame about your body, shame about what pleases you, and that can affect you later on without, it, it, you tamp down those things that you naturally wanna do and naturally wanna feel. And so you tamp them down out of shame, and then you don't experience them. You don't, you don't let yourself go later because of that subconscious shame. Um, society also um, can shame you. You know, society decides things, what, what's the best for, you know, I, I think um, society's kind of gone the other way now. <laughs> On the other end of the spectrum, when I was a kid, it was more, um, more modesty than there is today, I think, but, um, you know, a lot of you are my age and might still have that, you know, societal shame coding you. Um, past experiences can cause shame. Um, abuse, a lot of us when we were kids uh, were inappropriately uh, touched, talked to, messed with, you know, even in, in uh, ways that weren't necessarily um, on purpose maybe by other kids just just there's a lot of weird experiences sometimes when you're a kid and that can affect how we are when we grow up you know we have we, we have events in our lives that that completely change us and we might not even realize that's happening um, sometimes past experiences um, if you've had one night stands if you've put yourself out there um, when you shouldn't have and you feel bad about it and um, you can live in that shame you can roll around in that and, and feel bad about yourself for the choices that you've made and that can cause a lot of shame that will hold you back from feeling like you deserve to uh, enjoy all that there is to enjoy uh, sexually and then uh, the last one I have for past experiences is selfish partners you know a lot of us can go a long time and not even realize what there is to experience because we've somehow found ourselves with partners who are kind of just for themselves, whether that's because that's all they care about or they don't know, you know, everything's so taboo, people don't really communicate. So you might not even know that um, that's out there. Now, a lot of people who watch my videos are kind of in the same boat where I was and, and, and working on healing and maybe had some self-worth issues. And so that would come into play. If you don't think you're worthy of good things, that's what you're gonna attract, not so good things. And so there's a good chance that you haven't had uh, great partners and that could you know, be a reason why uh, you feel shame because you haven't been built up, you haven't been loved properly, you haven't, you know, experienced that. 
And then another big one is religion. Religion uh, can <laughs> religion can shame the shit out of you. Um, they uh, they lots of different religions, lots of different ways of going about things. But in general, women are viewed separately, and there are a lot of expectations, and and there's a lot of shame that that goes around uh, religion and women and sex. I think. Um, and an interesting thing is, you know, I didn't, I wasn't raised in the church. I didn't go to the church until, uh, I got with my ex-husband in my late twenties and, uh, I started going to church then. So I did, I was not raised in the church. My parents were actually, I think, pervs. <laughs> Our favorite two movies as when I was a kid was, uh, The Sound of Music and Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. So, um, yeah, my parents were definitely not religious, so I did not have that. But I, I did hear growing up, I would hear, you know, the religious people thought, oh, you should wait until marriage to get married. And I used to always think that was ridiculous. But now, um, after experiencing a lot of life, I get it. I get it. I mean, I understand the bi biblical version, but on a uh, on a different level, it just, just even if you're not religious, the idea of two people coming together uh, without having been with other people, I think can be a really, really good thing because you don't have anything to compare it to. You get to explore together. There's no, you know, there's a lot of baggage that comes when you bring other experiences into uh, the bedroom. So I actually can appreciate that. I, I think, you know, I don't know, going back, if I could go back in life knowing what I know now, I think that might be an option for me. I think that's a, that's a very smart thing to do, um, obviously, if you marry the right, right person. Um, anyway, on to the next one. Um, another main reason that we have trouble letting go or experiencing these things, not even just letting go, just being able to experience this, is lack of communication. That's huge. A lot of people don't want to talk about things. Um, sometimes we're unable to express our needs, uh, what we want, what we like, what we want to try, what we don't want to try. Maybe we're too shy to say it. Maybe we don't know. Um, but it's hard to to communicate sometimes, depending on who you're with, depending on who you are, your experiences. Um, a lot of people don't communicate so much in that way. Sometimes our partner might think what work for others works for us, and we're all different. We're all different. You know, there are some things I don't like that most people I think like. I've met other people who are the same, that there's things that, that you know, you, th you would think everyone would love and they don't, and, and it's, it's all so personal. We are all so different, you know? I like chocolate. He likes vanilla. It, it's, we're all so different. And so treating these relations as a, as a one size fits all is not gonna work because we're all so different. And so if we're any, unable to communicate that with our partner, um, we're not gonna get our needs met. We're not gonna be fully enjoying everything because if they're doing something we don't like, you know you're not gonna be enjoying and, and having those amazing, amazing experiences. Um, sometimes your partner's ego could come into play. Now I'm talking um, basic man and woman, but don't, don't, we don't need to get hung up on that, whatever your situation is. Um, and first I wanna say I love men. <laughs> I love men, I love their egos, I love the manly men and, and the fact that they fix things and they are assertive and that, you know, they don't break down emotionally like I might and, you know, all those things. I don't think that, that it's bad. Men, generally, not everyone, like to get things right. They like to know what to do. They like to please their women. They like to help. They like to provide. They like to do all those things. And so it can be hard because you might not want to... Uh, communicate these things especially you know if it's been a long time and all of a sudden you're like oh by the way you know you don't want to bruise their ego you don't want to hurt them also there are some people who are just you know egotistical in the shitty way and 
um, they think they know and you know you could have that issue too so um, also the last one under lack of communication is not having anyone to talk to you know sometimes you don't have friends to talk to you about these things sometimes you don't know you need to talk about these things you don't know that there's a problem you're just unfulfilled um, parents you know I don't even think my parents talked to me about sex to begin with <laughs> I don't I don't remember the talk uh, but there certainly wasn't any talk about this I mean that'd be kind of a weird thing to talk to your parents about right about uh, making sure that you're receiving properly and enjoying um, you know maybe you just think you know your parents told you this is how you make babies and that's what it's for you know who knows everybody's so different but when you don't have anyone to talk to about it it, it just kind of gets stuck in your head and so you don't um, get anything figured out so the next one is p-o-r-n i'm not going to say the word uh, i'll call it prawn um and i have there's no judgment from me about it whatsoever if, if you are consenting adults and you use it to uh, for visual aid and, and that's your thing uh, I think it's I'm not judging there's a lot of it's very exploitive but I, no judgment here my problem with it is when it causes unrealistic expectations when you watch that and you think oh that's how it's supposed to look that's how I'm supposed to look that's how I'm supposed to act um, and it's not real you know they're actors they're they're exaggerating everything it's all for show and that is not how you would normally act in that situation so um, it's it's harder now to because I mean I was exposed to it very 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 young I don't think it had any effect on me I, I didn't really know what was going on I was eight and my friend's brother sat me down and popped a VHS in the in the VCR and um, I didn't know what the hell was going on um, Ricky and El Paso <laughs> I hope you're not still a scumbag um, but that's back in the day now there's internet and it's everywhere and anybody can get to it very easily and it's like so far gone anything you could think of it's it's crazy out there and so if that's what you're used to looking at that can give you the wrong idea of of what it's supposed to look like and, and if you're trying to mimic that or if you feel bad about yourself because you don't look like that or that's not what's happening or there's so many different things um, also if you're using it too much if it's a constant thing you know that you can't overdo it you can't that that can ruin your relationships so prawn not necessarily I'm not gonna judge not necessarily no one should ever use it but um, it can be really it can be really detrimental to if you're wanting these experiences these these full body experiences if you want to really let go comparing yourself to other people is not gonna be healthy it's not gonna get you there and another thing um, the last thing I have about what makes us get blocked from finishing is stress stress in general um, worrying about anything worrying about what what you're gonna do at your dinner party what is going on at work you know your mind can really wonder and that stress can <laughs> can show itself in the bedroom and if you are worried about other things instead of being right there in the moment enjoying what you're doing that can be a problem also stress about not finishing it can become quite a problem and you can worry about it as soon as you start you can um, start thinking oh no I hope I finish for whatever reason you want to please your partner you want to finish um, but that worrying that it's not gonna happen can stop it from happening you know as you know what you think about is what you draw to you so if you're sitting there going oh my gosh I'm not gonna finish I'm not gonna finish I'm not gonna finish you know probably not gonna finish so on to what you can do to help relax and experience 
more of these things that were mentioned the full body the multiple the just the pure bliss that I think we're designed for because why is it a possibility if we're not designed for it just so you know I do have one of my workbooks I mention my workbooks all the time one of my workbooks is specifically on sexual healing so if this is striking a bell with you and you think you might want to shift your energy toward um, a better way in this department I will have it linked below so the things that you can do first of all really really big is be with the right partner huge 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 be with the right partner so so nobody's perfect you don't have to have the perfect partner but there are some musts and one of them is no shaming you know if, if maybe you're with someone or have in the past who shames you about anything about um, what you wear about what you do what you won't do uh, your preferences your anything there cannot be there's no room for shame we already take that on enough. There's no re room for our partner shaming us. If our partner is shaming us when it comes to, the, to sex, then then we're gonna have a really hard time uh, relaxing and letting go and and being in that space. Um, and I think I think I missed I mentioned this, but no pushing to do things you're not comfortable with. Um, sometimes somebody will want you to do something and you're just not there and and you can get pushed into it when you're not ready um, which is unfortunate because if it comes at a, at a loving oh hey I'd like to try this usually if it's a good relationship and you're comfortable you can you will often come around to being willing to do these things because you are at that comfort level and you're exploring things and you're not being shamed and you're not being pushed so I'm sorry I don't know if you can hear the kids yelling out there um, but both need to be open to trying different things and I'll talk about that a little more in a minute. Um, being able to communicate or to be open. It's hard to communicate. Um, I think in general, in general, it's all general, women are better communicators than men. Like I said, the ego plays into it and we're more emotional. Sometimes we're able to talk about things more. So you've got to be with someone who is able to communicate and who's open to communicating there are so many people in this world who just don't want to communicate it's it's very interesting I've noticed that a lot more over the last few years but um, there's just no there's no um, knowing there's no intimacy there's no getting to know each other on a deep level I just did a video about that recently um, so you want to be with someone who's open to communicating um, and don't just give yourself away you know you're never gonna find these amazing things with someone on a random one night experience um, I don't want to get too woo woo about the energy exchange but you know I am a Reiki channel and um, energy is kind of my thing but you have to understand that there is an energy mix that go that goes on at, at the highest level possible you know, like when you go into a room, I've talked about this before, if you go into a room where you say it's a funeral home, you can feel the energy. The energy is negative. So understanding that we are, <laughs> as women, we are being entered into. We are literally taking in that energy from this other person. And they mix. And that's not going to feel you uh, or leave you feeling well if this person is of a crappy vibration if it's a one night thing um, their energy is gonna mix with you you're gonna take it on in literally and it's gonna affect you and if you don't have that relationship it's not gonna be good um, and if they just leave if it's just a one night thing for most of us um, that's not gonna feel good that's not gonna feel good that's gets gonna roll more into the shame that you deal with later on so just be careful with with who you're um, 
sharing your room with. Very important. Um, you need to trust and have that emotional attachment if you want to have the full body experiences and the, the real energetic um, highs, I guess. Um, you need to have that, that trust. You need to be able to explore comfortably. You, you, you can't do that with someone you don't know. And to, to really, really experience what we're talking about here, what this person asked about, you really need to have uh, a connection of somewhat. You need to be comfortable. You need to trust um, all that. I'm not saying you need to be in, in a committed marriage. I'm not judging anyone's preferences. Um, but you do need to have some sort of foundation and trust and emotional attachment to experience what we're talking about. Um, the more desire you have for a person, the more turned on you will be and the more likely you will finish and experience that. So building that desire, um, because when you do finish it, it's like this explosion of pleasure. And you know, it's, it's so different than men and women are so different that we, we kind of need that in general extra, that emotional attachment, that affection, um, and it starts outside of the bedroom. And, and for me, I need uh, affection and mental banter. I need uh, the wittiness, the, the getting me, the, the mental part of things um, to even think about going there because uh, that's, just, that's just how I work. So um, real important. To have the right partner and that said it's really important to be the right partner um, you've got to you've got to be what you're wanting here you've got to be open to things you've got to be open to realizing your partner has needs and your partner has different needs than you do and being open to exploring those things and not being shut off to listening being open to communicate all these things you need to also be that person um, because that's gonna, you know, in turn, make your partner a better partner. You can't, it's not a one-sided thing. Um, next, don't ever fake it. <laughs> don't, don't ever fake it. Um, your partner will continue to do the same things, thinking all is well, thinking they're doing a good job, if you fake it. Don't do that. Take that off the table because they're just going to continue. You're, you're rewarding them for doing something that's not working. And it leaves you unfulfilled. If you are lying about it, you're not finishing, it's the, you're not getting what you need. Uh, it's just, a, it's just a, a disaster. It's a recipe for a disaster. Um, and also, you'll, you'll cause more shame, I think, on yourself for being untruthful. Uh, you feel bad that, you know, oh, but I can't go back from it. You know, you just, you feel bad for lying because it's lying. And um, I think that could bring more shame on yourself. Um, and I think it will want you to cause, it'll cause you to want to engage less often. Um, you'll be more likely to not want to do these things because you're not getting what you want, you're not being fulfilled, and if you have to fake it and you're feeling this shame, and anyway, you get what I'm saying, don't do that. Real important next thing is to release the shame. Change your story. Um, figure out what kind of things look back in your life. What, what, is, what has caused you shame? Do you feel um, like you can't dress the way you want to dress? Do you feel like um, some traumatic event has happened? Or do you feel like just society in general made you act in a way that you don't want to act? Kind of take a look at that and figure out what makes you tick? What makes you feel good? Um, and release that shame. Get rid of that. Um, and no thing, no, it's not your fault. If, if there, if there was some sort of um, traumatic thing, if somebody treated you poorly, if someone did something to you as a child, if 
any of these things, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. We come into life and we have all these experiences and we grow and we overcome them and it's really part of life. Everybody has different experiences, bad experiences and different things. Um, not that it, you know, negates your specific thing. Your specific thing is very important, but holding on to it forever is not going to be good. It's not your fault, but you don't have to hold on to it. It doesn't have to define who you are. Whatever's happened to you, you deserve to, to experience all these things. Um, and don't live in the past. Don't live in the past. Maybe you were promiscuous in an uh, earlier time in your life. You're not damaged goods. Um, don't, don't live in that guilt and shame. Let it go. It's done. Move on. All you can do is start and be who you want to be now. Don't hold on to that because you'll never be able to let yourself go. You'll never be able to enjoy the moment if you're sitting there thinking. And I, like I said, a lot of this is subconsciously. If you are if you have love for self-worth, if you think you don't deserve it, if you think you've done things that are unforgivable or you shouldn't have been like that and you wish you could change it, you can't, it's done. Move on, look to the future. Do not hold on to those things that keep you weighed down into that shame. Um, be in the moment. So don't let your thoughts wander. It's so easy to, if you're not, if you're not completely engaged and being fulfilled and it's not amazing, it's easy to, to let your mind wander. Think about bringing the kids to school, whatever it is. Um, don't allow yourself, be present, be in the moment. Um, allow yourself to get lost in the feeling and then focus on the sensations. Not, don't focus on what your partner's thinking. Um, don't focus on the fact that you're worried you're not going to finish. Just focus on the feeling. Allow it to feel good. That's how you let 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 go. You you enjoy the feeling. It's it's just like um, with meditation. It's it's raining those thoughts in. You know, bring it in. Um, and think about finishing and how great it will feel because a lot of times we we'll, would start freaking out like, oh, I'm not going to do it. It's not going to happen. And he's going to be upset. And what's he thinking? Don't do that because that's drawing it to you. So you want to think about finishing and uh, draw it to you. Um, that said, don't make finishing be the end all be all. I think that was a huge thing when I... I caught on to that like don't make it the end goal the only goal it's got to be that allow yourself to and communicate that with your partner if that if that's an issue allow yourself to just enjoy whatever happens and if you finish you finish if you don't you don't but you're gonna enjoy whatever happens in the meantime and it really will take the pressure off and when you take the pressure off of yourself to not then you will. So take that pressure off of yourself. Okay, the next thing you can do is embrace your feminine side outside of the bedroom. Practicing self-care and love and um, you can't get everything from your partner. You can't expect your partner to give you everything and to fix everything and to make everything happen for you. And so th this has been big for me. I know I used to work um, I used to work for a big corporation. I was a credit analyst and I um, had to be really assertive. And um, it, it, you know, when they say you work in a man's world and, and sometimes as women, especially if we get into that corporate world, we can, we can lose sight of our femininity and we have to fight to get to the top and we have to be aggressive and we have, you know, and it, it, it can change you and so make sure you are embracing your feminine aspects and um, making yourself feel good in general if, if anybody wants I can do a video on on what I've done to circle back and embrace my feminine side again lots of things you can do but that you know you need to, to practice that outside of the bedroom and and feeling getting in that feeling um, in your general everyday life at home. And so um, you'll kind of get into that mode um, and allowing yourself to re receive instead of constantly pleasing others. Sometimes that's hard to do too. 
we want to we want to give 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 make people happy um, but learning how to receive is really important the next one is don't compare yourself to others um, either your friends what you've seen on prawn um, ideas in your head from whatever do not compare that's the worst thing you can do in anything in any situation uh, is compare yourself to other people you are you you're unique just like everybody else now um, but you're your own person you're, you you can't you aren't them they aren't you everybody has different experiences everybody looks different feels different shape different do not compare do not compare you you can't if you aren't loving yourself the way you are if you are comparing yourself and being down on yourself no one else can love you 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 can't allow it you can't allow anybody to love you if you aren't loving yourself so please don't compare yourself to other people because if you're laying in bed thinking oh I don't look like this person oh I don't feel like this person it's different you're never gonna experience those things you're never gonna experience the pleasure that you want to experience because you are comparing yourself so find ways to um, appreciate your body you know if you don't like the way your body's shaped working out is a thing um, you you can you can change things if there's things you can't change accepting it being okay with that but you can't experience these things if you um, are hating on yourself and comparing yourself to other people okay um, and then practice re relaxing in general whether like in meditation or just sitting in a quiet room maybe with some soft music on um, and practice being without all the crazy because you can't go from chaos constantly and expect to go into the bedroom and somehow stop being chaotic and focus on what you're doing and allow yourself to enjoy it and allow yourself to feel um, this joy and feel the good feelings that you want to feel you can't go from chaos to peace like that if you don't practice it so practice uh, allowing yourself to feel good as often as possible I mean that's gonna be good anyway so uh, we are nearing the end here um, learning to receive takes practice but you're worth it and know that know that you deserve all good things um, good things are not just for other people sometimes I know I've thought that many times over my life oh that that kind of a relationship is good for those people they get to have that I don't that's not true that's not true nobody deserves anything um, more than you do nobody deserves good things more than you do it doesn't matter your past it doesn't matter any of that you are available to have all the good things uh, the only thing that holds you back from that is is your your feeling about yourself about whatever's going on but you do deserve all of it um, and know that it's an interesting thing if you've ever experienced you know if you've ever experienced meditation at a true level um, where your vibration shoots up and it is just pure bliss if you've experienced things where your heart and your mind really come together um, I have I experienced that when I had my sons um, wanting a child for so long and then carrying it and being nervous and not knowing if it's gonna be okay but in my heart wanting it so bad and when your heart and mind connect and my son's born and it's just this love that you can't explain those those instances you know what I'm talking about um, where everything just feels insanely good um, then you experience that with someone else and if you're on the same level and you're you're purposefully trying to experience that and you're working together to experience that that feeling is magnified when you have two people with the same intent and the same goal and the same feeling and it, there's nothing in the world like it and it should be experienced and um, if you don't know that that's a thing you should be going towards that and if you have experienced that then, then then you know then you know it's out there 
and it's a possibility. And I think sometimes when you when you when you find out it is a possibility, it, it's kind of nice because then you you won't settle for um, less than that anymore. So just want to encourage you to not settle, not feel shame, not feel guilt, not feel any of these negative things. Feel worthy of having uh, a great sex life. Um, don't feel shame around it. Uh, there's reason that we are able to experience what we are able to experience and you should. Um, so don't feel guilty about wanting it. Uh, none of that. So that's it. I hope this helps somebody. It's an interesting topic, not something I normally would cover, but um, I couldn't get out of my head. So I'm going to post the Reiki video when I do it. I think I might do it tonight. I'm not sure. Um, and if you have just listened just because and you're not really into Reiki, just know that um, you don't have to believe necessarily that Reiki works. You don't have to understand how it works. I mean, none of us truly, truly understand how it works. Um, you just have to be open to it. So if you've watched this, if you're still watching this now, I would suggest um, watching that video and being open to that energetic healing, um, even if you don't really get it. So I'll post that below when it's done. And I just want to tell you, in case anyone hasn't told you today, I love you and I will see you very soon.